since thanks to COVID you can't get to your local shore, I've decided to come down to my local shore here today and bring you all on a virtual rocky shore safari. Here we have a seaweed of the upper shore. This is the seaweed that you'll find highest up the beach. Uh, it's called channel rack. You can see it's got these um, kind of spaghetti-like almost fronds uh, that branch. And if you turn them over, you can see that the frond is inrolled. See that there? It's curled in on itself, and that's where it gets its name, channel rack. Channel rack is adapted to living high up the shore and it can survive exposure to the air for extended periods of time. It can even lose most of its moisture and when the tide comes back in it'll rejuvenate. So you can find it high up the beach on sunny days or high up the shore on sunny days um, to the point where it's brittle and you can crum crumble it in your fingers but even that will rejuvenate once the tide comes back in. So if you see Channel Rack, you know you're on the upper shore. One well, of the first animals you come across as you go from upper shore to lower shore is this chap here. So it's a sea snail, obviously, in its little shell. You see a dark shell with obvious spiral and apex that comes to a kind of a blunt point. And this animal here is called a common periwinkle. And they're extremely abundant all across the shore on most rocky shores and this of course is the same species that's picked and collected and eaten particularly in the continent but also in Ireland common periwinkle and those shells can come in a number of colors most typically this is the kind of form a grayish black or greenish black uh, but it can even come in a, a red or an orange color as well So here we have a common seaweed of upper shore rock pools. And this is gutweed. Gutweed is one of the ova species, which by and large are quite hard to distinguish um, down to species level. But gutweed is quite characteristic. It has long unbranched filaments, which are air filled like, um, well, like the human gut, like intestines. They look like intestines. And you'll find these floating, straggle-like, across the surface of upper shore rock pools. So it's one of the other species you can distinguish down to species level. Spiral rack is a rack of the upper shore and usually lies in a band just below channel rack so it's towards the extreme upper shore. Like most rack species, or many rack species, it has a flattened frond with a prominent midrib. you notice that it's draped over the rocks and it has these twists in the frond that give it this kind of curled locks appearance which gives rise to its name of spiral rack. It doesn't have any air bladders. It doesn't really need them because it's in the upper reaches of the shore where water is shallow anyway. But it does have fruiting bodies reproductive bodies on the tips of the fronds when in season and unlike air sacs when you squeeze these you find that they're they're full of a gel which contain the, the reproductive gametes so that is spiral rack if you find spiral rack you know you're on the upper shore 
another extremely common species of the whole shore is this which is another type of sea snail it's a limpet and the limpet is well known for its sticking abilities so if you give it a poke it's not going to budge it sticks to the rock while the tide is out clamped hard down to the rock to keep its moisture in when the tide comes in then it'll graze its way across the rock here but it'll always come back to its home scar uh, the site where it's bedded in and over a number of years it'll actually wear away the rock on that uh, home scar and make itself a perfect little base camp for itself so common limpets have quite a conical shell a bit like a volcano um, and a characteristic species of rocky shores here's a good example of some of the marks left by foraging limpets or other sea snails uh, once the tide comes in they move over the surface of the rock and using their sharp teeth they rasp algae off the rock surface and that's how they feed they leave these rows of very characteristic patterns on the surface of the rock surface the algae in the rock so a typical species of the middle shore is this seaweed here which is egg rack or knotted rack see it has long strap like fronds and it has large air bladders that are positioned one after the other like eggs maybe hanging down almost like a necklace and these bladders their purpose is to keep when the tide is in to keep the fronds of the seaweed up in the water column where they can photosynthesize and get access to the sunlight and access to nutrients and typically you'll find egg rack hanging down on rocks draped over rocks and it's a very characteristic seaweed and one that it can be used as an indicator of your location being the middle shore This is the beetle anemone. The beetle anemone is generally red in colour, found in rock pools, um, but also in wet rock across the whole of the rocky shore. They have short red tentacles, stinging tentacles, with which they catch their prey and pass it to their mouth which is at the centre of the animal, there in the middle. My mouth is in the same place as the bottom. So it's just the one orifice in and out. And one way of distinguishing beetle and enemies from other rock pool and enemies is the fact that they retract their tentacles if you gently poke them. And you can feel the sticky tentacles. And then they retract. You can also just about see the little blue rim around the, uh, the base of the tentacles there. And they're found on pretty much every rocky shore in Ireland, so the beadlet and enemy. They also come in green and brown forms. When fully retracted or out of the water, the beetle anemone looks a bit like a jelly blob. See the soft body 
and you'll see these scattered along the shore among the limpets and the barnacles. And here's another midshore seaweed, a really common midshore seaweed, which is bladder rack. And bladder rack is recognized by, well, it has a flattened frond with an obvious midrib, which you can see there. Um, but it has these paired air bladders. These air bladders, again, are to keep the seaweed up in the water column when the tide comes in, give it access to light and enable it to photosynthesize. And those bladders are just literally filled with air. You can hear them pop. Just found living on this piece of seaweed here is another periwinkle species. This guy here is the yellow version of the flat periwinkle. So if I just pick him up. <clears throat> you can see him there. Flat periwinkle gets its name from the fact that it has almost no spire. The shell is spire is almost completely flat on the shell. There's actually two species of flat periwinkles and for the purposes of rock pooling they're almost indistinguishable. So when you're recording them there's actually a, an option to record the two species as a single combined name because they're too difficult to tell apart in the hand. And flat periwinkles come in a whole range of colours from bright yellow to reds, to oranges, the, you will even find pattern shells, um, a whole range of different colours. And they live on seaweeds in the middle shore, mid to lower shore. That's where you'll typically find them. Here we are on a bit of shore with um, a freshwater spring nearby and here's a seaweed species that is typical of freshwater outflows and brackish water areas. This species is called horned rack and it looks like many of the other rack seaweeds except for the fact that its upper fronds near the tips of the fronds especially are inflated with air sacs, long air sacs that run up either side of the front, giving a very distinctive appearance. You can squash them there and they just feel like air floats or air bags. The front itself has a fairly distinctive mid rib and is flattened uh, with regular forked branching, giving it almost the appearance of uh, stag horns and then ending in those very characteristic elongated air sacs. So that's horned rack, characteristic species of uh, freshwater outflows and brackish waters. Another anemone species of the intertidal, which is becoming increasingly common with warming sea temperatures, is the snake lox anemone. Unlike the beetlet anemone, its tentacles do not retract when touched, and its tentacles are long and snake like. The body colour varies from greyish, as in this case to brown with purple tips, or even vivid green with purple tips on the tentacles. In some rock pools, snake locks can become the predominant species. It's 
Sometimes on the seashore, a periwinkle isn't a periwinkle. Hermit crabs are small crabs with soft bodies, and as such, they take up residence in discarded sea snail shells, moving to bigger and bigger shells as the crab itself grows. Often on the seashore, you'll see a periwinkle or other shell move quicker than it should. It's always worth having a second look to see whether inside there might be a hermit crab living. And not all seaweed grows on rocks. Some seaweeds grow on seaweed. So here we have some... I'm sure you can all tell me what this is by looking at the strap-like fronds and large air bladders. So this is egg rack. But growing on this egg rack is this bushy red seaweed. And this bushy red seaweed is hemiparasitic, so it takes some of its nutrients from the seaweed, from the egg rack. Uh, otherwise it's largely using it for support and substrate to grow on. And this is called rack siphon weed. Rack siphon weed is probably the most common epiphytic seaweed on, uh, on intertidal rack species, particularly on egg rack. So that's seaweed growing on seaweed. Rack siphon weed. So it's often worth flipping over rocks on the rocky shore because a lot of animals will live underneath seeking shelter from the elements and from predators. And here we actually have two species of sea snail that are again typical rocky shore species. We can get this fella in focus. This one here is quite characteristic. It's quite a flat looking shell. Uh, the spire is quite flat on it and it has these very distinctive green and purple stripes. And this is called a flat top shell, or a purple top shell. And they're probably the most common top shell species you'll find on the rocky shore. Also living under this rock is another type of top shell species. This little one here. And this is a grey top shell. It's a bit like the flat top shell, but you notice that the, the shell is actually more spired, it's uh, less flat in profile, and the little striations are kind of grey and brownish and closer together. And again here we've just flipped over this rock and immediately we can see two creatures hiding. And this one's a species most people will be familiar with from their youth and it is the green shore crab, or just the shore crab. It has a green coloured shell a set of pinchers, which is busily trying to pinch me with. And you notice that the legs are different. Um, some of the legs have a spiky end to them, and that's for clinging onto rocks, while the back legs have a slightly flattened look to them, and that's to help with swimming. Um, the carapace itself is quite distinctive, and it has five teeth, or serrations, either side of the eye, with three little bumps in between the two eyes. That is the shore crab. Also hiding in this rock pool is this chap. This is the common cushion star. You can see it's got a, not like a typical starfish that we think of, it's got very short little stubby arms and a very flattened profile. And it does look like a bit like a pin cushion, I guess. That's where it got its name. If I turn it over, you can see it's five-way symmetry, like a starfish that you'd expect. And under there, I don't know if you can see them here, wriggling about, it's got its 
just see them there wriggling its little tube feet and that's how it moves around. And it likes to hang out underneath rocks for safety. The common cushion star. Coral weed is a seaweed of mid to lower shore rock pools. Has an unusual appearance looking almost skeletal like. And the frond consists of short stubby segments, typically for common coral weed ending in a triplet of segments. It feels gritty between the fingers as it consists or contains calcium carbonate. So I've just turned over a rock here and underneath it I found this little guy here. And this is a common starfish. It lives up to its name, it's by far the most common starfish you'll find. Um, quite tricky to find on shores, they're more common underwater but you will find lots of juveniles on rocky shores and sometimes you'll f find them washed up in large numbers on the shore. They have five way symmetry, five arms again the little tube feet underneath and in the middle is their mouth and these guys feed by latching onto bivalves like mussels and they'll do battle with the mussel so they'll try and wrench it open with their little tube feet while the mussel tries to stay close with its little muscly foot but the starfish has an advantage in that the starfish's system works on water. It's a hydraulic system. And the beauty of a hydraulic system is you don't get tired. So while the mussel tries to keep itself shut using, like we would, mussels, and it gets tired, the starfish doesn't. It just bides its time. And every time the mussel gets a little bit tired and loosens its grip on its shell a bit, starfish will crank it open a little bit more and pretty much all the time the starfish wins and once it's opened the muscle shell enough it'll actually vert its stomach into the muscle and digest it externally and then suck all the nutrients back inside you can see its little tube feet here trying to grip onto my fingers and those tube feet are water powered Sometimes on the rocky shore, you can find one of our most easily recognized kelp species. This is Furbelos. Very easily recognized from its broad strap-like stipe with these characteristic ruffles near the base. A hold fast serves to hold the kelp onto the rock. Looks like some sort of marine hedgehog with short stubby spikes covering it. typically grows to about two meters, maybe three meters in length, and it has the broad finger-like frond that's typical of many kelp species. Barnacles are extremely common across the rocky shore, covering the surface of many rocks. Beneath the hard outer shell, the trapdoors, lies a creature related to the crabs. High tide, the trapdoor is open, and small hand-like projections, which are actually the animal's feet, reach out to filter feed small particles of food from the water. The small grey creatures you can see crawling over these barnacles are marine springtails. So oarweed is one of the species of kelp you'll find washed up around the Irish coast. It has a slightly flattened stipe and a smooth stipe clear of growths and seaweed. And invertebrates. It's very flexible and you can bend the stipe of oarweed virtually in half without it breaking. The frond itself is long and finger-like and is often covered in growths of things like sea mat which you can see here. It has a hole fast to attach it to the rock and a relatively short stipe. 
So smooth and flexible, that's ore weed. So if you were looking for the rocky shore's top predator, this probably isn't what you'd have imagined. This is a dog whelk. You notice the shell is normally white, but it can come in striped colours and also browny or browny green. It has a very prominent apex spire, very pointy. And on the other, on the other side, uh, it has this channel leading out of the mouth of the shell and a kind of a reddish operculum uh, or kind of guard or door to the shell if you like. And the dog whelk is possibly, if not probably, the top predator of sea snails on the intertidal. What they do is they come across an unsuspecting snail, usually a bivalve, maybe a mussel, or in this case a ray trough shell. They climb onto its back and using a tongue that is covered in very sharp and strong teeth, or radula, they drill in to the shell of the bivalve using the radula. They inject digestive juices and they suck out the contents of the shell. The dog whelk then moves off to find another victim or have a sleep. And all that is left behind is a shell with a perfectly circular hole drilled through it by the dog whelk's radula. You can see one there. And literally, if you search any shore or any pile of shells, you will find hundreds of shells with these perfectly drilled holes in them. The vast majority of those have been preyed on by the dog whelk. It's not just as a top predator of the intertidal dog whelks are known. All around the Irish coast, um, middens have been found containing thousands or hundreds of thousands of dog whelk shells. And it's thought that these middens are related to the trade in a particular type of dye called Tyrian purple. Now Tyrian purple was used to dye the clothes of emperors and kings in past historic times. And at one time it was worth by weight many times the worth of gold because it's so hard to extract and each whelk shell only gives a tiny amount of Tyrian purple dye. So to get enough to be worth trading for, you would literally have to kill and crush up and extract the dye from thousands and thousands and thousands of whelks. And yet this seems to have been worth their while because of the sheer value of the Tyrian purple dye. So dog whelks are not just top predators, but they were also once some very valuable commodities around the Irish coast. Another very common kelp species found washed up around the coast is Cuvi. And this is probably our most important kelp species because it fo forms kelp parks, which are habitat to a huge diversity of seaweed, invertebrate and fish species all around the Irish coast. The stalk or stipe of cuvie is generally crinkled and quite often, as in this case here, covered in epiphytes of seaweed and also uh, various marine invertebrates such as, in this case, barnacles and there's some sponges and a few other species here growing on the stalk. Again, it's got long finger-like fronds typically with things like sea mat again growing on them. Uh, the main difference is the stipe of, of cuvie is circular and when you try and bend it in half it snaps. It's much more brittle than boreweed is. So if you find kelp, long finger like fronds, a rough 
stipe with lots of stuff growing on it, that's going to be coovy. Yeah. I've just flipped over this rock here and I've discovered this guy attached underneath and this is actually a chitin which is a very ancient type of mollusk or sea snail. This chitin also has the common name of chain of mail because their little shells look like chains, chain mail, you know, interlocked armour. And they uh, graze on the underside of these rocks and then when the tide goes out they clamp on underneath to, uh, to stay safe. Again, almost impossible to remove. I'm not going to try and flip this guy over. But he's got a muscular foot underneath. And they come in all sorts of colours as well. Different species come in different colours. So that's the chitin. Just come across this seaweed here. And this should be familiar to anyone who visits the local shore on a regular basis. And also anyone who's into eating seaweed. Because this is dulse. And dulse is collected all around the coast of Ireland. Uh, it's typically dried out on rocks in the sunshine. And when it's dried out, then it's bagged and sold. And you can eat it. It has a kind of a, I don't know, slightly peppery taste maybe. Um, but seaweeds, all seaweeds pretty much are edible. And they all contain high levels of vitamins and minerals. So they're very good for you. Um, dulse is the one we most commonly encounter for sale, but a whole range of other seaweeds are either farmed or are available now in a whole range of outlets uh, for eating and including in meals. Dulse is red with flattened fronds, strap-like fronds. Um, feels quite almost papery, but rubbery as well. <coughs> And you'll find it most typically on the lower shore, but bits of it will get washed up into the mid-shore, or even higher. Here's some sea squirts. Sea squirts or tunicates are actually alarmingly one of our closer relatives. And they live attached to the rocks, they filter water, they have an inhalant siphon and an exhalant siphon. And you can see, if I give it a gentle squeeze, where it gets its name from. And the little bit of water that squirts out. See that? One of the most easily identified seaweeds you find on the intertidal is a lower shore species, and it's a rack. This species here is called serrated rack. You'll find it typically on the lower shore, though it can occur up into the mid-shore area. It has flat fronds, and this incredibly distinctive serrated edge to the frond, which gives it its name, which is toothed rack. feel the frond and the reproductive bodies are out, uh, they feel kind of lumpy, just towards the tips of the fronds. And you'll typically find the species again draped over rocks on the lower shore. In this particular example we have many small calcareous worms living on the surface of the frond and these are Spirorbus. Uh, type of tube worm. And also here you can see very small juvenile flat periwinkles grazing across the surface of the sea. So that's serrated rack, a species of the lower shore. One of the habitats we have on this shore is mussel reef. In this case it's blue mussel reef. You see the individual blue mussels here. 
they're all stuck together by these threads, which are called bissel threads. And they attach the muscles to each other and to the substrate, in this case rock. When the tide is out, they remain tightly shut. Any ones that are open here are dead. When the tide comes in, they open up again and they filter the water. And these blue mussels are the same ones you buy in the shops and eat with wine and whatnot for dinner. Here we have some sugar kelp growing. In this case it's attached to both rock and to the, the mussel reef itself. You can see this sugar kelp has a long ribbon-like frond with frills, uniformly brown in colour, no obvious midrib. And it's attached to the rocks with holdfasts. And this juvenile kelp is about half a metre in length, but it can grow up to four metres long. It's typically found on sandy, silty kind of substrates. Another quite common inhabitant of rock pools on the lower shore is this guy here. This is the common shrimp. There's actually two very similar species of common shrimp. and They're almost indistinguishable unless you have them under a microscope. These guys spend their time scavenging on bits and pieces of food in rock pools on the lower shore and sometimes if you're very lucky and very gentle you can introduce your hand and they give you a free manicure under rocks <coughs> even quite high up the beach you can find <coughs> these little guys here this is a common blenny or a shanny. And shannies have the unique and uh, quite handy adaptation that they can survive out of water as long as their gills remain moist for quite extended periods of time. So you'll find them <coughs> hiding under rocks on the mid, lower and upper shores. And they'll stay hidden under those rocks or seaweed until the tides come back in again and they can set out to forage. The shani is the blenny species you're most likely to find on the intertidal. It has a number of other uh, easily recognized blenny species such as tompop blenny, but generally you find those only in the subtidal or at very um, at lowest extremes on the shore. So that's the shani. We put them back in the water, <clears throat> see them swim off. Thanks for joining us on our virtual Rocky Shore Safari today. We saw some of the most common species you'll encounter on the Rocky Shore, however, there are a whole range of other species that we didn't cover today. Um, you know, in any particular stretch of Rocky Shore, you could be dealing with dozens, if not a hundred or more different species. But if you start with the basics, if you start with the easily recognized species, you can build up your identification skills and confidence as you go along. Explore Your Shore is funded by the Environmental Protection Agency and is a project of the National Biodiversity Data Centre. The goals of the project are building a baseline data set for intertidal species in Ireland. 
for exploring marine species as bioindicators for climate change and water quality, and also to raise public engagement and awareness of marine species in general and intertidal species in particular. We encourage you to visit our website at www.exploreyourshore.ie and there you'll find all the information you need on the project and all the resources you need to get involved in recording intertidal marine biodiversity. So please visit the website and take some time to explore what's available. In terms of getting involved on the shore in biodiversity recording, we have four surveys, each aimed at a different species or habitat. And by selecting the survey that suits your needs best, you'll be able to get involved quite quickly in marine biodiversity recording. Really, all you need is a camera or a smartphone to take pictures of the species you, you find and want to record and download the details of the individual surveys from our website. And then you can upload your data either directly through the National Biodiversity Data Centre app or through the individual project data forms which are available on the website.